pump fake and a dart to number one. And Reggie has it down to the 10. Tonight's ball game is coming down to number four. Virgil Gray not only has taken away Reggie Gray, right there he took away Hugh Whitaker, and what they're doing is they're taking away Nathan Stanley's first options and making him throw the underneath throws to his second and third options. Cats warming up offensively. First 13 plays, 31 yards. Last three plays, 31 yards. Second and five. To the end zone for Whitaker, incomplete. Gilliam had the coverage. That's a good shot right there. You're going to get Hugh Whitaker coming to the field, and, and Stanley's going to try and hit him in the back of the end zone on that little sail route, corner route, and it just sails on him a little bit. You know, Virgil Gray's another tall defensive back, so he, he had to put it up where only Huey could get it, and unfortunately it sailed out of bounds. This is a big series. This is a big possession because San Jose does get it at halftime, and you need to get points out of this series. Third down. Five for a first down, ten for a score. And Stanley's going to get buried by James Bryant. So the man with the Hannibal Lecter mask during the anthem with a huge play sacking Nathan Stanley. And this is just where he's just going to go on an outside move. He's going to come back inside. He's going to get Mudge to move to his right. Comes up underneath, and Stanley actually had Ver, uh, excuse me, Reggie Gray open, who ran a little double move post corner to the back of the end zone. And that's probably why the sack came, because it was a double move uh, route. Stanley's not moving too well. We'll take a break. We're at the one minute warning. Bryant with another big play for Pittsburgh. One minute to go in the first half. Pittsburgh 28, San Jose 7. Rich Cellini, Steve Pappen in Pittsburgh coming up on the Peter Cassara Clothers Halftime Show. We'll chat with the Cats head coach, Darren Arbett. Chris Townsend will have an interview with Rich Wranglin, the All Arena lineman who almost caught a pass. And we'd love to see number 64 rumble. And we'll look at the highlights and numbers from the first half. No the biggest number right now is number of turnovers of San Jose. Yeah, that, that's the big one right now, Steve. When you, when you turn the ball over in this league, even though it's, it's wide open, a lot of points are scored, when you turn the ball over, you're going to be in a, in a chase mode for a long time. And with three turnovers already, I mean, you're, you're looking at a team that's fired up. And, you know, you and I were talking about it before we came on air, and they have a good roster. They, they do. They, when you they, look through what they assembled, they only have four people on the roster that were with the power last year. Good players, Pat. I mean, you look at Sergio Gillen. He's played for Spokane, won a championship. Virgil Gray has two championships. Tommy Grady, the MVP of the league. I mean, you have a guys, and then you have a good coaching staff with Coach James who brought Damian Harrell, who's an all-arena uh, all-star himself. So this isn't a bad power team that San Jose's facing. Fourth and 15. Standard scrambling. Chase running out of real estate. And it'll be another stop for the Pittsburgh offense. Bryant. Gave chase and Stanley just ran out of room. 
54 seconds to go, which is an eternity in the AFL. And Pittsburgh has the ball back. Yeah, and see right here, this this is the, the inexperience of Stanley. It's fourth and 15. You're really not going to run for 15 yards in the season. So what you should have done there is just thrown the ball to the end zone, whether it was caught, intercepted, or whatever. But now you might have got a pass interference. One of those big receivers might have came down. But right. on fourth and 15, you cannot take that sack. You just got to throw that ball, throw it off the net, and let one of those guys go get it. Yeah, and you know what? You're right. At that point, then it's just at least it's an opportunity for your guys to make a play. And if they intercept it, it's the same result. But the ball would be back further this way. Decent field position, and Grady goes to work at the 17. Rodriguez on the first play, one hand juggling catch, and then tossed into the stands and pushes the ball back up. It's a catch and a first down, a gain of 29, and the fan got a souvenir. Yeah, and you, you, gotta, you gotta send Rodriguez back, but you got a ball. And I mean, that was just a great job right there by Rodriguez. Van Thomas is in his back pocket. I mean, he kind of tips it to himself, bobs it a few more times, has no regard for that wall, goes over, and then shows the ball. I mean, that was a great job by Rodriguez tracking that ball down. The best part is he shows the ball and the fans grab Just it. Grab it, yeah. Didn't care about him. No. Give us the ball, you can go back. Yeah. Look for some runs here, Rich. Look for Pittsburgh to try and use some clock. Well, Grady just going to go back and take a knee. Yes, yeah, I've, I've, I've never been a big fan of this, but it's that chess match. You don't want to give San Jose the ball back, but I've never been a big fan of this. I'm, I'm with the go, 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 go. You score points whenever you can. So San Jose calls a timeout. This is something that adversity this is this is going to test that young man right there this is going to test you know and russ is probably explaining you know settle down relax i mean things aren't going right but as we saw and we, we've seen for years this is a long game a lot of things can happen you know it's still a second half but what you got to do is settle down and what russ is probably telling him right there is don't force it don't try and get 21 points back in one series take each series as it is and go get points Now they'll hand it off. Taggart spins off the line and gets a minimal gain. Another timeout called by the Cats. They burn their second. 39 seconds to go. I don't like this strategy for a number of reasons, Rich. One, if you don't get in and San Jose goes down and scores and makes it 28 to 14 and they get the ball, now it's a one possession game coming out of halftime if they score again to make it 21 28 now you're scrambling also san jose struggling on offense go get points and force them to go get points against your defense i mean have that mentality because if you don't get in here and, and if you get in the, the, the halftime 28 to 7 you you won but if you go in 28 to 14 because you couldn't score a lot of things can change with only a two possession game third and goal Brady throw the fade to the end zone. It was caught momentarily, then bobbled, and now they're up against the wall, and it's a touchdown. Well, Rodriguez had it for a moment, then it slipped out, and then he trapped it in the corner against the wall and got six more. I wonder if they'll give him 12 because Look at that, right oh, over man. the top, and then pins it with his backside to start with, and then able to spin around and secure the ball. Look at this, goes right over his shoulder, Pat. And then he clutches it and able to reach down and hold it with his legs and everything else. And the official's coming in to get a look. Point after is good. Prichet Rodriguez has four touchdown catches. Pittsburgh leads San Jose 35 to 7, 29 seconds to go. First half. Those walls used to be dead. That's why I was a little shocked at first, because those walls used to be out. Now they're in play, so he does a great job of, of, of trying to secure it. The one question I need to know is, are there any other receivers on this power team? Because right now, do, it do is, you need <laughs> any other receivers? Yes, it is Grady to Rodriguez. All, all day, all, every day, and it, it, it's working. So why would you, why would you go elsewhere? I guess. Rodriguez, big target, six four. 
And he's been strong enough to use one arm to get, you know, Lee Van off him a little bit and is very comfortable catching the ball with one hand. But you talked about a comeback a few years ago. That oh, lasted no. a good week. <laughs> so <laughs> then you pulled a hamstring. So what did I tell Scott Wood that one? Uh, pulled the hamstring thinking about it. Yeah, a well, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> But it was a great career, and San Jose is going to need a little. Look at that young guy. No gray in his beard. Hey, hey. Scowl on his face. Seven seasons in the AFL, San Jose. And then back to New York. All-time AFL leader in all-purpose yards per game, 200. Don't blink, AFL player of the year at 98 and 99. Well, I told you the story. I don't know about that defensive back next to the wide receiver. I told you the story last night about the one game I played defense in this league, and I thought I was going to lose my head. Coach Shell, uh, I gave up two touchdowns on two plays, so I don't know if you'd want to <laughs> if they would want to put that defensive back uh, moniker on that stand on, on the screen there. But I had fun. I, I really did. I enjoyed being around it. And, you know, Coach Arbet's still around. You know, I played with Omar when he came in. He was, he was, you know, a younger guy than me. And wasn't fortunate enough to get the rings, but been a part of it and, and enjoy it. I get to meet people like Rich Chilling, you know. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's big right there. <laughs> people pay a lot of money for that, Steve. Plays it on a bounce, pauses, and then accelerates through the hole and gets knocked against the boards at the 20. Flag down at the 16. It's got to be a holding call here. 25 seconds, one timeout. Everything to the sideline. Then you take shots once you get inside the 15. This is going to be trying to preserve the clock. J.J. Payne called for the hold. This is dangerous now. This is this is Coach Smith has to be smart. 25 seconds, you can probably get six plays. So take what you can. Don't don't get greedy. A turnover here is going to be deadly. So take what you can. Get what you can. If you can't score, so be it. Don't let uh, Pittsburgh get the ball back. First down, Willis with the catch. He said Pap right there on the sideline. We'll have a visit with the Sabercat head coach to start at halftime. Oh, yeah, they're going to get him there for a rough of the passer. Uh, down low on the legs? Yeah. Well, that'll help San Jose's yeah. cause greatly. Wasn't intentional, but anytime you hit him, especially down around below the knees, they're going to call that. Well, that's just one extra play because you get to advance another 10 yards on that so perfect break for San Jose. Now you can really go sideline and preserve this clock and take a little bit less chance until you get inside that 10 yard line because you are across the 25 yard line already with just one play. Stanley on first down bobbled and then Secured. Bob Harper has had a case of the bobbles today. Yeah, and, that, and that's trying to run before he gets the ball. That's, that's him trying to make something happen for his ball club. And you got to secure it and get this ball in. And Stanley throws a nice, uh, you know, hot potato there. So I mean, it's going to get to you. Secure it and go. Just takes his eyes off again. Fourteen seconds to go. First half. Second down. Stanley to a sliding Willis. And the Cats in business tap and eight seconds to go. Yeah, here na now, if you're Coach Smith, and see, I was here in 2011 with the same position where on the one yard line didn't score. Now, if you're Coach Smith, you got it. Your quarterback's getting hot. Throw the ball, get in. If you got that bounce at three, bounce it, bounce it four with the running back, uh, with the receiver coming off, do it. But you've got to get points. You only got one timeout, so you're you're almost 
stuck. You got two timeouts. You're, you're stuck. There. One timeout. I was thinking two plays. Okay, two plays. That's it exactly. They go to the air on the first one. And it's a bullet and incomplete. Harper wanted a hold on Gillen. Four seconds. Now this might be something if it's on the power where San Jose is going to be able to put more time back on the clock. Yep, and they just said eight seconds. Is there a such thing as called mugging in <laughs> arena football? <laughs> <laughs> the call officially is illegal defense. If I'm Harbor, I, I, I want to veto or void that call and, and, and get a nice holding call, and I think that's an understatement. Eight seconds to go first half. One timeout remaining. Now you might take a chance with the run. You might give this ball to J.J. Payne because eight seconds, you might be able to get three plays in here. Willis instead of Payne, bouncing off power tacklers and in. Touchdown, Sabercats. Yeah, exactly what I thought Coach Smith would do. And, and that's something, though, where you got to tell these guys, eight seconds, you can't be scrounging around looking for something, and Payne does a good job with his second effort to get in. I mean, he's, a, he's, he's not the biggest big body, but he's, he's reminiscent of Chad Cook. He's going to lower his shoulder, try and get in, and just force his way in the end zone to get his team uh, six points. Nobody likes it when you scrounge around. <laughs> Pertwee missed the PAT. Thirty-five, thirteen. Mm. That puts you in the trail mode even more. See, the thing that's interesting here is if you squib it, they're going to just fall on and try and kick a long field goal. If you kick it deep, you have to cover. Lasue has been doing a great job of returns. And remember, if you do kick it deep, the clock won't start until he actually comes out of the end zone. So if he gets a return to, say, the 20-yard line in four seconds or something, they might be able to attempt the field goal. So Coach Jarnigan's got to be telling these guys, you have to wrap up, you have to tackle. What I think they would do, and if you were smart here, is kick it off and then have your whole entire team stop around the 15-yard line, the 20-yard line, and let Lesway dance around and try and make something happen while the clock runs out. Oh, and they're putting Al Vance Robinson back here for this one here, Rick. See what Pertwee does. 35-13. Well, I just got a text message from a Sabercat fan saying if they do not get the fire lit, she's going to vote for me to put a uniform back on. So I'm going to say let's light this fire pretty fast. <laughs> Pertwee. <laughs> High and deep. Robinson, and it bounces off the net, and the Cats have it going into the end zone. Oh, what a play for San Jose on the final play of the first half. Highland snagged it and bolts into the end zone. That's the fire we were just talking about, and that's going to get you back. And Pertwee kind of makes up for the miss PAT with that ball off the net and gives gives his ball club six points. Well, Good did anybody from it. Pittsburgh touch it? Is there still going to be four seconds? Did Robinson even get a hand on it? Well, it wouldn't matter anyway because okay. it wouldn't start until it comes Game's out. out. All right. Yeah, correct. Well, how about that for a makeup? And remember, San Jose gets the ball to start the second half. Now you're going to second guess why didn't I put Lachey back there? If you're the oh, of course. <laughs> Willis puts it down for Twee. Right through. 35 20. What a turn of events. Well, since we have to do it again, who are they going to put back there this time? You really can't blame Robinson because, I mean, it, it hit the bar and comes off, or it hits the bottom of the net and comes off hot and heavy. So now. Are you going to put the sway back there and take, or are you going to put another guy back there to see? Because if it happens again, we got a ball game. And they did take two seconds off the clock. Highland, fourth season for Moorhead State. Big time play when the Cats needed it. 
Is Moorhead State a black university? Pap, Moorhead. third TD of the game. 29 seconds to go. Not exactly sure what conference they're in, so. You know, like the, the Gramblins. Right. More hit, is that? Historically black. Is sure. it, yeah. HBCU. Get on your phone. Figure that out. Figure, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go to the library and take a book. Don't, I'm not going to Google it. I'm not into you, this tech world. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in some legwork to figure this it'll out. It'll take you way too long. <laughs> Don't do it. No, Scott Wood's not doing nothing. I can send him. 35-20. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Your answer will sway right, back. Yep. And that's just one. I mean, I was, I've done that for seven years. And I mean, that's one of the most frightening things is being back there with your back turned to these guys running down. And when it hits the ball like that, it's almost something. you got to kind of play short step, short stop and uh, dig it out of the dirt. Sway, take it out. Time will expire. Sway still moving around. And the Cats able to bottle him up. And Highland with the tackle and now flag is down at the 20. And if that's on San Jose, that's not going to end on the, on, on the play because they are on defense and power will get a chance at a field goal if that's on the Sabercats. So yep, so okay. dead ball against foul against Huey Whitaker, 10 yard penalty start of the third quarter so that gets us to halftime here we'll be joined by coach Arbet. we welcome you to tonight's peter casera closers halftime show yeah i think coach james is arguing that that's a defensive play so that should have went and been a field goal attempt for the power that's what he's trying to argue, but right that not a dead ball at the end of the half that a penalty on the play and then we can try a field goal at least try to chuck one deep. All right, we're joined by Sabercat head coach Darren Arbet. Coach, uh, not a great start to the game. That's an understatement, but a nice showing by the Cats showing some fight there in the second quarter. What's your message to the team in the locker room? Oh, adversity hit us right square in the face. Things didn't go right for us. I told him I'm going to look and see who's fighting, and, and the guys continued to fight. We get the ball coming out here, and uh, we can make it a one-score game, and uh, there it is. Assess the performance of Nathan Stanley in the first half. You know, we're, we're fighting right now, guys. I mean, we're, we're the Sabre Cats. It's 21 guys out here, and they're all fighting, and that's what's happening. Coach, we look forward to an exciting second half. Thank you. All right, thanks. Head coach Darren Arbet and the catch trailing Pittsburgh 35 20 at the intermission. Peter Casera, Hobo's halftime show, comes back right after these messages. Halftime in Pittsburgh between the Sabercats and the Power. San Jose returns to Comcast Sportsnet. Halftime in Pittsburgh between the Sabercats and the Power. 
San Jose returns to Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area on April 18th at 7 p.m. Cats and the Portland Thunder at the Moda Center. San Jose knocked off Portland in the season opener. Tune in, catch the Sabercats on the home of Sabercat football, Comcast Sportsnet. We'll be back with more of the Peter Casera Clovers' halftime show right after these messages. Halftime in the Steel City, beautiful view of Heinz Field, home of Halftime in the Steel City, beautiful view of Heinz Field, home of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cats and the power at the half. All arena offensive lineman Rich Wranglin, a big part of the success of the Sabercat offense. Last week, he sat down with our Chris Townsend. Well, we finally got him here on Sabercats Weekly. Rich Wranglin, who's been one of the top linemen in the Arena Football League, he now joins us here. And by the way, I want to say thank you for coming on because if people don't know, last year the offensive line boycotted the show because all we did was quarterbacks <laughs> and receivers, and the big guys weren't happy about that. that so awesome. that's why we're, we're leading off with you this season to, to have s s some good camaraderie with the offensive line. Well, I appreciate it, Chris, and on behalf of the old line, we appreciate it as well, the gesture. Yeah, so you're, you're our leadoff guy, so we're not gonna we're not going to fool around. It's great to have you back, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. I, and I remember when you left for the Kansas City Chiefs, it was like, no, not Rich, don't let him go. So you've been back and forth a couple times. It's been an interesting experience for yes, you. Yes, definitely, definitely. It's been bittersweet. I've been, you know, highs and lows. It was really good to, to see the other side and um, to go in the NFL and, you know, and kind of represent the Arena League and the Sabercats positively. You know, you leave Kansas City. Now, obviously, you want to stay in the NFL. We, we all get it. But how great is it for you that there's always a spot here for you back in San Jose with the Sabercats and Darren Arbett. Well, it feels good, man. I mean, as long as you compete hard and you're at the top of your game, I mean, there's always a spot of you at Sabercats. It's a little hard here, you know, because uh, they don't play any games, but it feels good always being able to come back. Yeah, talk about that competition that's in this locker room, because this locker room is truly a locker room that people talk about one thing. It's about winning the championship, and everybody needs to be pulling on the same rope or you're not going to be here. Yes, definitely. Uh, nothing is given to you here. You have to take everything, and uh, they treat this like this is like the most professional place I've ever played for. You hold to a very high standard here, and you have to really compete, and you have to be at the top of your game. You have to work out. You can't take anything for granted here. You talked about the offensive line. You like being the enforcer. You oh, like being man. the tough guy. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. You need that on the team. You need that on the team, and the O-line has to be the, the heart and the dogs on your team, and we are. We mean business. 
because it, it's a little bit different when you play in the Arena League because the game is all about throwing the football. Mm -hmm. You don't run it very much. And I know offensive linemen, you love to run block and you love to take guys down. But when you talk about being enforcer, how are you an enforcer when you're always in pass protection mode? It's about the finish. You know, at first, you know, you're pass protecting, you're making sure you got your fit, you're making sure he's not beating past you. But we always teach here to finish. And we're, we're throwing guys and chucking guys at the end, and we're just making them know, like, look, Bertie, you're not even close to the quarterback, so don't even try it. And you're not, it's going to be a long day. And how's it blocking for Russ, McNutt? Oh, I love it, man. Russ, Russ gets that ball out, so you can really take chances and really try to impose your will on people. And uh, so I love Russ. Is it a little different having a left-handed quarterback versus a right-handed? Yeah, it's a little different, but Russ, Russ does a good job of keeping in the pocket and just keeping everything nice. Now, you want to do television. You have done television. You've been on camera. You've been off camera. You've done the video editing. When it's all said and done, you see yourself stay, staying in TV? Well, definitely. If I could ever look as good as you, I, I'll stay in it forever, man. <laughs> Come but, on, um, man. With that smile, are you kidding me? <laughs> I got a little something, but uh, definitely TV is one of my passions, man. I mean, every aspect of it from the camera work and the lighting and just all the, the it's really like a family. It's like a group, you know, mm -hmm. it's just kind of like a team, you know, it's not one guy. I mean, you're the quarterback, you're the man, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes helping you out. And I just enjoy the whole process. I can see turn on the TV and seeing, seeing you be the color guy, color analyst for a football game. I can see that. I got a lot of work to do. I got a lot of work to do, but it'll be something I'll be very interested in in the future. And you got your kids here in town, so that's got to be nice. They're going to be able to be there for the home opener on Sunday? Uh, yes, yes, definitely, definitely. I'm glad to see those little faces when I, when I do something or Daddy does something good. They're always smiling at me, so that's always great. Yeah, it's always good to have them in town. It always just makes you feel whole versus when they're not here. It's tough on the season. Yeah, it helps you get away, too, you know, because you can't be thinking football 24-7. So sometimes it's good to have the little faces to, to, to distract you. Well, I think we did it right this year leading off on Sabercats Weekly. Having an offensive lineman there, so we're all good, right? No boycott, lineman and everybody. No boycott. The treaty's been signed. I mean, we're all good this, this year. Well, so, Russ, everybody always talks about the quarterback. You want me to wait till like, midseason to finally get to him? Yeah, let everybody wait for him. He's a prima <laughs> donna. He'll be all right. <laughs> we appreciate the time. It's great to have you back, and good luck for the Thank 2014 you, appreciate campaign. appreciate you. Nice piece, Townie. Rich Wrangland, Pat, look out. He's coming for your job. I think he'll be good. All right, we're going to come back and recap the first half with more of the Peter Casera Clothers Halftime Show right after these messages. Halftime in Pittsburgh. Cats making a little bit of a comeback. 35-20 is our score. It was looking a lot bleaker than that, Steve. We got down to about a minute to go. Let's go back to the start of this one. It was a house of horrors at console. That's the first play of the game is a bobble and an interception. Pittsburgh already scored. They would quickly make it 14 to nothing. Then the muff on the exchange. They cashed another one in. And Virgil. Beats Reggie between the two Grays on the field, but this at the end of the half, San Jose able to power one in. Payne gets it, and then this second to the last play of the half, misplayed off the net. 
And David Hyland comes flying in, grabs it, and scores. Cats are going to get the ball first when we get started in the third quarter. You look at the numbers, not too far off totals, but those three turnovers. Look at the numbers sponsored by Swan. 35 20. Yeah, I mean, and if you take away those last 29 seconds, I mean, this is kind of looking very bleak, but fortunately for San Jose fans, those last seconds did happen, and now they're back in the ballgame and need to come out here at a halftime. Let's see if they can make a different start to the second half than the first half when we come back to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Good news, Pap. You can text your friend back and tell her that the Cats <laughs> made, a, made a nice run. It's 35-20 as we get ready for the third quarter. You don't need to do anything more than work out in the hotel. You don't get a 10, 15-minute <laughs> jog in, hit the sauna, and then come out here and call the game with us. That was the football gods looking out for me. Yeah, no, it's perfect. <laughs> perfect. We don't want anybody trying to do a comeback with the Pappin on the jersey. Sabercats return to the SAP Center Friday, April 4th. Spokane Shock for Military Appreciation Night. Tickets to all Sabercats games are available at Ticketmaster.com or the SAP Center box office during regular box office hours. Your hand get tired signing last week? You busy? Oh, well, or you, you were working. No, you were with Fitz, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, all right. me. Everybody else was and out there signing away. Trust me, when it is my week, my hand won't, won't even worry. I, not too many people. Well, the Cats need to hope that trends continue. And I know it's only two games in, but Cedric Walker's D has made adjustments in the third quarter this season. Their first two games, both wins. The opponent has not scored in the third quarter. They need one of those tonight. And it's going to start with the offense. Coach Smith needs to take this offense down and get points because now with the two plays that happened, a stop, I mean, a score by your offense, now that defense that you uh, yep. touched on will get that fire and get that, that, that excitement going and try and get the, uh, the power shut out in the second half to get the win. Willis back for San Jose. Roush. Mentioned the four power players to return. Roush, linebacker Curtis Young. And Freeman and Gilliam, defensive backfield. The power come out with an onside kick. And there's a scramble. And they'll say up against the wall. Wow, I mean, that's that's living on the edge. That's what a new coach does, and that was part of my keys. Do not get caught up in the emotions of, of the new coach and things that go on. And now they'll enforce the penalty. And that's why they did that. And they knew they had 10 yards yep. in the bank. Yep. It almost worked. Almost. Yeah, it almost, I mean, Highland does a good job of getting his hands on it and it hitting the wall and being declared, you know, I mean, out of bounds, but it could have been costly. All right, this is a big opportunity for Stanley to hit restart. And forget about the first half of the three turnovers. It was magnificent. Starting last week as the AFL Player of the Week on first down. First play, third quarter, knocked down, incomplete. Thomas almost had the pick. That was the second play he's made tonight. First play of the game of the, to start the game. He got the interception in the first play tonight. He does a good job of sticking his big paws out there, knocking that ball down as Stanley was trying to hit 
Willis on the dig route, and fortunately he was a half a yard to the right. If he was to the, uh, excuse me, to the left, if he was mm -hmm. to the right, he'd have had his second interception. Second and ten. Willis motions. Diving catch made by Willis. First down, San Jose. Gain of 11. Yeah, they're going to try and come back with the same look here and bring Willis over the middle and kind of make the defensive back think it was the same thing. And here he kind of stops and comes back out like a little comeback route. Pitch and catch. At the Pittsburgh 17. Bryant looking on, and Ron James is in agreement with you, Steve. You said no catch. Yeah, first I thought it was a no catch, but after they put, showed the replay, I think he did get his hands up under there, and I, I didn't see it touch the turf. So if he's challenging, he's going to lose a timeout here. Well, there you go. Whoever his whoever's on Coach James' headset telling him that's an incomplete pass is about to get yelled out because yelled out because this is a this is a completed catch. Hands up underneath it the whole time. Oh yeah, you're right. When he bounces off and the ball bounces, the ball moves, but his hands underneath it. So whoever was on the headset explaining that to Coach James, be ready for a uh, earful because you're going to lose a timeout. Coach James is over there talking to George Atkinson. George is saying, you know, man, you're not going to win that. Yeah. Come on. That's 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 a catch. And tell Swanee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell Swanee that he needs Stallworth out there. There's George and the head coach. Yeah, that's yeah a it catch. doesn't even, you know, the only thing you wonder is does the tip when he rolls over scratch the turf? And that's no as well. If, if you're going on the, the, the premise of you got to have evidence that says that's not a catch. You're not going to win because there's nothing there that's going to say that that's not a catch. No, that's that's 11 for San Jose, and we'll figure out who coach is going to yell at. Yeah, this is this is one that I assume you'd see on film and go, oh, no, that's a catch, and turn around and come back, and it's taking a little bit longer than I expected. Now, I've seen weirder things happen, but I, I know, but the ball never touches never. the turf. His hand is underneath it. It does bobble, but he has it the whole time secured against him, and it never touches the turf. Watch. So down here, hand underneath, spins, doesn't touch there. He tucks it and rolls. And we, we showed that other angle from the other side, and it doesn't, it never touches the ground. After further review, the receiver had both arms underneath the ball. It is a catch. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Pittsburgh will be charged with their first time out of the half and charged with their first challenge. And that could be where you, you take a chance. You know, it might get overturned. And that also could be let's break up the, the monotony. I mean, the, the drive of San Jose. Let's slow them down. Let them go over there and talk about it. That might have been a, a strategic play with the chance of getting the ball back because that was clearly a catch. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know their path. I mean, that, that would have been a curious idea to try to slow down San Jose on that. Timeouts are valuable, especially it could end up being a pretty tight game. Gray with the catch, spun down inside the five. Gain of 14. So much for slowing them down. My theory's out the window. I mean, that was a great job here. Stanley's just pitch and catch, and that's what he's got to get back into until he gets back in this game. It's just pitch and catch. Here's an, just a three step drop to Gray in the middle, and Gray's going to do a lot of things with yak yards after he catches the ball and does a good job of securing it and, and keeping it into his chest so the power couldn't rip it out. Little pitch out to Whitaker and Huey's in for six if it stands. Flag down at the five. Now, see to me, if they call offsides on Pittsburgh and it's a touchdown, why would you throw the flag? Offside 
defense, number six, lined up in the neutral zone. The penalty is declined, result of the play, a touchdown. Touchdown, Sabercats, things tightening. And six, Freeman. Where's your guy, where is he? Is he here? Yeah, he's off, yep, he's, yeah. he's on top of uh, Gray. And he, you're off size and then you don't make a play, that's a double whammy. Well, if you're gonna cheat, you gotta get something you out of it. You gotta get something, it. exactly. Pertwee on and bangs the PAT through. So the last minute of the first half was good, and so are the first couple here in the second half for San Jose. They're off the mat, and they're fighting through some adversity in the Steel City. 35-27, time is out. San Jose Sabercats football on Comcast Sportsnet. By Norton. San Jose Sabercats football on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you. San Jose Sabercats football on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Fries.com, by Norton, by Pepsi, and by Logitech. San Jose making a game of it. Happy fans in the stands, Pat. Good to stand up and cheer to get free pizza. It's the loudest console to spend tonight. Go deep. Not you, Steve. Stay here. <laughs> Hamstring problem. Hyundai Sportsnet <laughs> Central tonight, 1030 on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Recap the Cats and the Power, Bay Bridge Series finale. News from around the NFL. Henry and Kate will be in the studio. They won't be kissing like those two. <laughs> Look at that. They don't even on kiss cam there, Pat. They're just smooching. That's love. <laughs> That's love. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Sabercat fans have to like the last handful of minutes. It was really ugly for about the first, what, 28 yeah. minutes yeah. of the first half? But that's what championship teams do. They, they Look find at this. a way. First 29, 56, seven points. The last 306, 20 points. And that's good work by the Villanova grad to our left, <laughs> Mark Oxenrider, our ace statistician. Good kick. Falls right into the lap of the fans. The Sway can't return it. This is where number eight takes over the ball game. This is where. Lee Van yeah, Thomas for yep. San Jose. This is where he's going to do something to change the, 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 the game. I used to hate that when that ball went in the net like that. You couldn't, couldn't return it out. And yeah, it just falls down. Yeah. Injured Sabercat player. It looks like Fontenet. Yeah, I can't see, but it's been in that same position. And if he can't go or continue or take, he is going to have to go out for a play at least. David Highland will come in, and he hasn't played defense all night, and I don't know if it's an injury or something. I've seen him on special teams, but we'll get some. We'll get to see him for the first time, and you hope that you know he's able to continue if he's banged up. It is Fontenet. He's on his knees, so you wouldn't think it's something with his lower extremities. It's probably a hit in the stomach, loss his wind, something of that nature, you, you hope. Might be an ankle. Nice. Walking very gingerly, favoring that left leg. Yeah, not even putting his heel down. Well, I mean, you bring Highland back in. He started the first two games. 
Didn't know why he didn't start tonight. So, you know, you're, you're still good on that side of the ball. And again, as long as number eight's over there, you got, you're always going to have a chance. You and I can go play a little defense with Cleveland and we'd still be okay. You. <laughs> Come on, Rich. You got some defensive back skills. I'll buy pizza post game for everybody. <laughs> That's how I can help out. Tommy Grady back to work. Sway, catch. And he gets it up to the 15. Highland in with the pop on the sway. That's the sign of a veteran. That's the sign of a leader. The team's lost a little bit of momentum. And now you're gonna, you know, you're trying to maintain a lead, and you come out, and the first thing you do is a three-step drop to get you some confidence and move the ball out of your in, out of your territory. Grady, 12 of 21. Four TDs throwing. He also ran for one and miscommunication on the stop and go. Kaule Namoku was gone down the sideline. I won't even try that. I'll say K3. K3. Kaule Namoku <laughs> is now K3. Misread the, the route of the defense's position, Highland, and took off. And luckily for Grady that Highland didn't jump that. That was definitely a pick six if he would have jumped it. Third and one. Tagger at the fullback. Rodriguez motions in the slot. Brady looking that direction. Oh, it's Lesway. They had two yellow helmets in the same area. Lesway and Rodriguez. Incomplete. I thought he was going for Rodriguez, but Lesway was right there down the sideline too, Pap. Yeah, well, this, it all starts from up front. Stewart, Carter, Vasquez, Maka putting pressure on Grady. And I think he was going for Rodriguez, and I think Lesway just took off as well, and it was two okay. people in, in the same vicinity. But I think that was intended for Rodriguez. Big fourth down, partner. Fourth and one. Rodriguez in the slot. They're going to try to run and power their way to a first down, and they'll get it. The former Sabercat, Tommy Taggart, pushes the pile. Used all 295 of his pounds to pick up a first down for Pittsburgh. I know it's only the start of the third quarter, but that was a great call because I think everybody in the building th thought we were going to see Rodriguez deep one-on-one -on -one with Cleveland, and Grady hands off to Taggart and gets his team another four downs. Clock working towards nine minutes to go, third quarter. Brady, quick one. There's Rodriguez. Caught around the legs by Highland right at the 20. Finished off by Huey Whitaker. Kind of a pattern here with Tommy Grady. First down, he takes one step, three steps. He's, taking, he's getting rid of it quick on first down, so he has manageable second downs. He sees back, a lot of times when you go backside motion into the boundary, you get a rotation in your coverage, and, and there exactly what happened. Backside motion, Cleveland Thomas went to the middle of the field. Easy pitch and catch out to Rodriguez. Well, not even pitch and catch, easy quick pitch for five yards. Appreciate Rodriguez, eight catches, 80 yards, four scores. Waves in motion. Brady going to come back that way to number one. Flag down. Okora new as a cat's DB. Good call. Gets ticketed just yeah a little too good, soon good coming call. through the sway. Good call. You know, in, in, in arena football, it, was, it would have been third down, but the, the difference is it's only 10 yards. I mean, it's not spreading right. foul, so you still get a chance to play some defense, but I mean, that was the right call by the official. K3 returns. Pittsburgh still <laughs> up by a score. Carolina <laughs> Moku going to be the motion man. Brady, pressure, cut, and sack. The Sabercats collapse the pocket. Terrence Carter finishes it off, but all four defensive linemen for San Jose, 3D linemen and Maka. Offense number 24. And Taggart, to add insult to it, gets called for a hold, and they still give up the sack. Yeah, Carter's there, Stewart's there. And Maka down at his there. feet. And again, it goes back to last week. 
Philadelphia kept five step dropping, going for the deep stuff, and the pressure came and it was a blowout. Tommy Grady's had some success when he three step drops. Here he tried to take a five step and ends up sacked. Boss of seven, second and 17. Grady, little pump fake. Rodriguez. And beats Cleveland Thomas to the 15. And Rodriguez picks up 11, but landed awkwardly. Struggling to get up. Holding his right shin. Ooh. That didn't look good there. I mean, it was awkward, but it, that's one of those ones that it doesn't look devastating, but those are the ones that, that, that hurt. Him. Getting bent up and twisted like that. Not holding the knee. No. That might be an ankle, high ankle sprain. Appreciate Rodriguez has been lights out tonight for the power. Training staff will work on him. We'll give you an update on pre-shave when we come back to console energy center. Cats and power in a good one. Appreciate Rodriguez was tended to by the training staff and then got up, pap, and jogged off. So good news. Check of the Fries AFL standings. West Division, Arizona, 2-0. No surprise there. Pacific, San Jose at 2-0. In the American Conference side. South and the East, Orlando and Tampa Bay still undefeated. Pittsburgh just one game in. Cut a break. Made the coaching change, got Ron James in. He talked about the talent on their roster. If tonight's any indicator, and I think it is, they're going to be pretty good. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you go back to week one. They yeah. led by 21 at halftime and came back and lost. So they, if, they, if things unravel they need to learn how to keep a hold of leads the play of the drive Grady the sway end zone no Cora had coverage incomplete that's what a lot of teams tend to do San Jose likes to play a lot of man and man they like to get up in your face and make you beat them and you have to realize these DBs are big fast and physical here so if you look right here the sway's just going to get by him, but it's not enough room for him to run away from him Incomplete pass. Fourth down. Carolina Moku motions. Brady going to go that way, trying to get past Cleveland, and the flag comes in. Batted away, but a flag. I'm going to disagree with this one if they call pass interference on Cleveland. And the only reason why they will is because he didn't look back for the ball, but I don't think you have to in this league. I don't think this was. Pass interference, defense number eight. Happiness instead of the goal. Automatic first down. Yeah. Well, Sandy got there a little early, Pat. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see why you would call that, but the ball was short. K3 wasn't coming back to it. Cleveland not looking. But this team, it just looks different without Rodriguez.
first and goal following the penalty. Brady. End zone with Sway. No, incomplete. Good route. I mean, Cleveland's in perfect coverage. Grady fires a low ball away. The Sway should have come up with the catch, but I mean, it's easier easier for me to say he should have came up with it. I'm up here with you. Cleveland was in good coverage right here, and he's just going to come back like he's going to go out, and we call that like a sell post smash route. And oh, he'd like to have that yeah. one back. You yeah. see his disappointment right there. Second and goal. Brady. Did he get it? Yes! Touchdown! Sean Palena Mofu. Yeah. The wall helped him. Get him. K3. K3. <laughs> no, it was a good job. I mean, that whole series, they were going K3 the whole time, and Cleveland's in good position. And I mean, this is just Grady being a veteran throwing the ball away where he can get him in the second touchdown we've seen off the wall. I couldn't see, and you know, I knew he had it for a second, then he banged it against the wall, which you can't see with his back to you is whether or not that trickles down and ends up on the ground, or if he's able to secure it, and he was. Roush. Power, get another score. 42 on the board for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh 42, San Jose 27, 501 to go, third quarter. Rich Cellini, Steve Pappen. Just look ahead to next week. The look is presented by Norton Symantec. Friday, the shock. Spokane swept both games. Last year, this year they're one and one. Lost to Arizona, no shame in that. And Eric Meyer, one of the best in the business. You know that that Spokane game is 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 big because in order to get to the Arena Bowl, you're going to have to go through Arizona, San Jose, and Spokane, and and talking with Coach Arbet in the off season and and having conversations. You know, it, it's almost like whoever is at home during the playoffs, you have the best chance of getting to the Arena Bowl. Sure. It's hard to go into the desert to win. It's hard to go to Spokane to win. Just like it's hard to come into Pat, I mean, excuse me, SAP. Yeah, not <laughs> wow. Arena to wow. win. Wow. The PAP Arena. <laughs> Coach Arbet, 2012 Hall of Fame inductee. 14th season. Sabercats head coach. He'd like to erase that three. Arena Bowl titles and make it four Arena Bowl titles. Willis fields the grounder. And gets knocked down by Bryant. Flag flies as well. Down at 14. We've had a clean game so far. Lately, the flags have been flying a little bit here to start the second half. There is no foul on the play for a block in the back. The block in question is legal. It's first down. Another player down. And this time it looks like they're looking at it. I don't, I don't know if that's Sergio Gilliam, number nine. I don't see him in the secondary, and they're looking at his knee. 
he is one of those guys that if it is him no it's number four it's Virgil Gray oh no that's one that's costly there even worse if yeah. you're Pittsburgh Virgil Gray defensively to the power team is worth even more than Preche Rodriguez is to Pittsburgh yeah. offensively yeah he is the quarterback of that defense he is you know it, it's Tommy Grady and then Virgil Gray is, as far as importance to this fo football team This might be a little bit more serious for the center back. He didn't jog off like Rodriguez, but a lot of times, you know, playing this game and being around it, a lot of it, you get scared. You know, you hear something, you feel something, you know, you're so used to guys having season in, in injuries and things of that nature that sometimes it's, it's all in your head a little bit until you actually calm down. Ray will go. Back to the locker room. Stanley on first down. Nice throw and complete for Rod Harper. Down to the Pittsburgh 21. Yeah, this is something where Coach Smith has got to change his philosophies now. If Pittsburgh was playing a lot of man-to-man, -man, they're going to go to zone. If you look here in the in the replay, this is this is a zone coverage because now you've taken Thomas out of the Jack linebacker spot and made him a corner. So you're going to protect him by playing some zone and just let San Jose play pitch and catch and not get over the top. Gray motion, mother muff snap between. Jordan Mudge and Nathan Stanley. San Jose gets this one back. It'll be second down. And I think what's going on here is Stanley's got to start switching up his his snap count because see right there the power they're going to they're starting to jump his thing. And I think what's happening is his snap count might be in too much of a rhythm to where the, the, the power defensive uh, linemen are now jumping it and they're getting up into Mudge before the snap is even happening. Second down for Willis incomplete. This is a big possession. This is this is crucial. I mean, you're trying to get yourself back in this ball game. The power is without their leader in the secondary. And if you don't get points or first downs here without him, you're going to give the power a little bit of confidence and they're going to start playing a little bit inspired football. Third and 13. Harford motion. Flag down. Stanley looking for Willis. He's open. Caught. Touchdown. San Jose. That's going to be a free play. That's got to be offside. That, that flag came out way too early. That's got to be offsides against the power. I can't see that being on San Jose unless they called the motion man offside. Illegal formation, offense number 78, encroachment of the second neutral zone. Five yard penalty, repeat third down. Oh, he didn't have enough, but they're saying there, see how close he is there, Rich, on the, on the big screen up top? They're saying, we didn't get a chance to sit on our screen, but up top, the fullback, there's gotta be a foot space between him and the quarterback. He was up in there, right, if you can see right here, He's too close to the quarterback here. He's got to be back oh, here gotcha, gotcha. at least a foot in between. You got to see daylight, and he's too close up inside, so that was the correct call. 3rd down again. Stanley Gray will be stopped short. Needed to get to the 11 for a first down. They've got him back to the 17. This is big. This is a, this is this is a huge fourth down. This is something where you're at, the, you're at the position on the field where do you just get the first down or do you take a shot at the end zone? And if you're San Jose, you just need first downs. There's still a lot of time left. I look for Reggie Gray here on a double move or a Jason Willis coming across the field. 
Stanley on fourth down. Gray, caught. And the saves touched on the board by Freeman. 11 yards and a Sabercat first down. Doesn't get any easier than this. Reggie Gray just going to run an out route beyond the sticks, and that was just easy pitch and catch. And that's due to the fact that Virgil Gray is not playing, and the front side corner is a jack linebacker where they he didn't know he's got to hold off the out route or the sail route and then come down on the short stuff. Under a minute to go, third quarter. On first and goal, Stanley, end zone. Caught, touchdown, Huey Whitaker. It's just too easy. Without Virgil Gray, without your leader in there, Coach Smith is just picking on the zone coverage of the power. And that's exactly what that is. It's just they're trying to pass people off and read the zone. And Hugh Whitaker's going to come here, and he's going to have a two-way go. I can go back to the end zone, or I can set up and run the little smash right outside. And he runs the smash route because of the defensive coverage. Good hold by Willis to get that one upright and Petrie bangs it through with nine seconds to go third quarter you know this is just see you, you see the the defensive back there freeman was kind of lost out of space gilliam kind of didn't know and i mean it's it's tough when you're a franchise with a new coach to beat a team that's arguably one of the best and you don't have your best receiver and your best defensive back still have the lead 42-34. The Cats have come right back in and tightened this one up. You know, now if you're if you're Coach James, you got to start looking about scoring points and taking field goals and keeping the points. And if you're San Jose, you got to start thinking about a two-point play. Second half, San Jose has been dominant this season, 62-13. They'll need more of that to complete the comeback in Pittsburgh. They need what they're going to need before we can start talking points and this and that is they're going to need a stop at some point because mm -hmm. if they don't get a stop, whether it's a, a field goal or a turnover on downs or a turnover, they won't win this game because if, if you trade scores in the fourth quarter, you're going to come out on the short end of the stick. They need a stop in some fashion. And it looks like they just showed Rodriguez up on the screen with the helmet on, so it looked like he yeah, might he's be coming back ready to go. Yeah, 15's out, and adjusting his jersey. Aaron Lesway awaits Pertwee's kick. Plays it off the net. Surrounded and stopped. Excellent coverage by the Cats, and that'll get us to the end of the third quarter. Huey Whitaker caught a touchdown, made the tackle on special teams.
Final quarter in Pittsburgh. San Jose trying to stay undefeated. Power in control of this one really until the last minute of the first half. And then the Cats clawed their way back in and have tightened it to a one score game. 42 34 Sabercat games. Great way to come on out, build morale, celebrate a birthday, an anniversary, even raise funds for your nonprofit. Get a group of 12 or more and get special discounts. Details call the number and bang extension one during regular business hours. Rodriguez back on the field. He was the motion man. And quick hitter. Kenny Fontenet's back on the field as well. So it's good to see both of those guys have bounced back from whatever ailment was keeping them out for a few plays or a series here and there. And now you're at full strength. And now it becomes who has it more, who wants it more. Kale Namoku made the catch. What do we call him? C uh, K3. K3. I K3, almost said yeah. K3, and I knew that wasn't right. K3. So I, I had a little lock up there, Pat. Grady throws a. Ground ball to first base, in the direction of Rodriguez. Yeah, we we discussed my transcripts earlier. Uh, for Portland State, so <laughs> you said a lot that's of why K3. A I'm lot of gonna, W's yes. and, and incomplete. I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce the last name, so we've dubbed him K3. Third down. This is where the panic and the inexperience might set in for the power because they don't they don't have a lot of returning players that have played together. Brady. Pressure escapes. Gets outside and picks up the first down. If it stands, flag down at the six. This is either gonna go holding or legal defense. Oh. Legal hands to the face. Is yes. That the call? And again, Reggie Smith, our referee, and his microphone has not worked yeah. all day, so we've done some serious lip reading. <laughs> and again, on third down, even though Grady scrambled for the first down, but that's championship teams, you got to eliminate those, those penalties and get teams off the field on third down and fourth downs. Make, make them have make a decision on fourth. On first down. Grady comes back to the check down, the sway. Makes the catch. In front of Huey Whitaker. It's Rodriguez on the last play kind of goes through the route and then signals to the bench and goes to the sideline. Yeah, and that, that's the bench area. When you take yourself out like that, that's just letting yourself know you, you can't go. Kalena Moku with the catch and a nice little spin of the ball, plus nine. I'm going to say it again, and the recipe to playing the Sabercats, you must three-step drop because of the front four and the great coverage by the secondary. And when Grady has been able to three-step drop and get rid of the ball fast, he's had some success. Whenever he takes that home run shot or looks for that five-step drop or the deep routes, he's putting himself in trouble. Coach James needs to get in his head because he's calling his own plays and just three-step drop, get rid of the ball. First and goal. Grady going to try to do it himself and will get drilled by Cleveland Thomas. Near the two. Five-step drop results in a scramble, and that's great coverage down the field, and that's a hitch fake right there, trying to get out. The pressure's coming, and he's still looking, and he does a smart thing here, and, you know, gets out, tries and gives himself up and get out of bounds. But, I mean, Cleveland Thomas is going to try and lay the wood. Second and goal. Taggart from the two, tries to get outside. And does touchdown Pittsburgh. 
good play call. We saw Taggart in the first half down in, in that red zone. They were trying to get him pounding straight ahead. And here they just get him outside. They do a good job of hooking the end right there. Vasquez goes inside and Maka or Hugh Whitaker weren't able to come over the top and scrape and get him before he got into the pylon. Flag down, Roush's kick is good. Holding, offense number 75, 10 yard penalty, retry. Now this could be yes. big, Pat, because yes. remember San Jose missed the one earlier and they've been chasing not only from a touchdown end, but from that one PAT end and now the hold on Keith Newell. will back Roush up and make this a lot more difficult. You know, in the, in the NFL, they talk about what are we going to do? Move an extra point back. We need to make the goal post narrow. These are narrow yes. uprights. Yes. Another part of a net, but you get the point. And we were talking last week on, on the radio about Nick Pertui, how he practices uh, PATs, and they were talking about you just get a light pole and you kick it in. Back it up after the penalty. Roush bangs it, and it's no good. So the hold. And he sailed it to the right, and it's hit off the net and the upright and doesn't go through, and Pittsburgh leaving the door open for the Cats. Fourteen point lead for the power. Forty eight thirty four. Hyundai Sportsnet Central tonight ten thirty on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Recap the Cats and power. Bay Bridge series finale and. All the news that is the news from the league that never sleeps, the National Football League. Didn't there used to be an offseason? It used to be. I, that, that's a thing of the past. It yeah. is. It is. And now the draft is going to be moved back into May. So the appetite for that information just is fascinating to me. This three-hour difference had me up both nights we were here in Pittsburgh. And both nights, I think I was up at about 5 o'clock watching NFL AM for the first time. <laughs> so, I, so I know exactly what you mean about now, it never at, sleeps. At that 5 a.m., you hadn't gone to bed and got up in case people were wondering. You were just thinking about taking a nap. Yeah. Right? It's only 2 a.m. to me. I'm fine. Yeah, I got went to bed at about 5.30 and woke up at about 7.30, 8 o'clock. So this three-hour difference. Yeah, you is, looked a little tired yesterday. Yeah. It's, it's draining me. Did you get uh, you got some good Z's last night, though, so now that's why you're so sharp today. We like that. <laughs> well, that's what you didn't you threaten me if I didn't go to sleep? I did. I did. So we're going to have to do more than four hours over two nights to go do a game. Roush. Hard one off the net. Willis. The Cats trailing by a pair of scores, and Willis dances his way up near the 13. Long way to go, 10 38. But San Jose needs to try to keep the pressure on Pittsburgh. Get it back to a one score game that one score game in the FL is like one run lead in Major League Baseball. It always puts the pressure on the opponent. Yep. And again, if you're San Jose, if you don't score and you, you have an empty possession, you're going to be in trouble. But then on the flip side, the defense is going to have to come up with some sort of stop in order to have a chance to win. Down by two right now. So you need a defensive stop or 
Cover an onside kick. Tipped in the air. Dangerous. Stanley going to get it back momentarily and then get crunched. Now Willis is right down there. It's going to end up being an incomplete pass. What a sequence that was. And that look, luckily, Stanley is a quarterback and not a receiver. Because if he was a receiver on that play and would have caught the ball and fumbled, it would be the Powers ball. So he goes right back to him and then gets, yeah, and didn't have possession of it. Yeah, so it's good. Works out well for you. <laughs> After all that, second and ten. Bryant got him as he was trying to unload it, and good thing he did. If he would have got a little more on it, Gillum would have been right there for the pick. He's trying to get it deep to Gray and didn't get nearly enough on it. Third and ten coming up. You know, Coach Smith got to know if you look at here, if the pressure's coming, it could have been a hold right there on the outside on the power defensive uh, lineman rushing. Coach Smith has to realize. He's down 14, but it's a lot of time. Even though they have new DBs and they're out of place, play pitch and catch. Throw balls underneath them because they, they're not going to let you get deeper. I'm not going to say they're not going to let you, but they're playing to not allow you to get behind them. They're down. Gray snares it out of the air and picks up a San Jose first down. Plus 12 for the Sabercats. Yeah, here, if, you, if you're watching this, just Reggie Gray is going to run a, a looky route. He's going to go pose. I can go corner. I'm going to sit down in the middle of the field. And up top, the defender, and that's what Sergio Gilliam is telling his, his teammate, he's got to come over. That was a zone coverage. They rolled the cloud, which is a zone to the front side and too high, and he didn't come over to squeeze Reggie Gray. He found the space in the zone. Brian, about a step and a half too quick. And that's what I was talking about, about changing the snap count. Outside, defense number two unabated to the quarterback. By rule, Pittsburgh has committed more than two defensive fouls. It's a five-yard penalty, an automatic first down. Clock continues to run, 8.20 and counting. Cats trail by two touchdowns. Stanley lofting it in the end zone. It's going to be intercepted. Easy pick for Sergio Gillum. And that's what I was talking about as far as staying the course. I mean, you got different DBs in the ball game, but you got to stay with what you're doing. You, 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 you got eight minutes to go. You can get it back. Pressure's come thrown off his back foot. The receiver, I believe that was Jason Willis, runs it out. I don't think he was trying to hit Reggie Gray on the post, and that's just not understanding the concept of what you're trying to do because of the secondary. That was an easy interception. I mean, that was like catching a punt for Gillum. And now the defense with 740 and counting really needs to come up with them incomplete off the boards. Now, if you're, if you're San Jose, you got to get this ball back. And I don't, I don't mean after they score. You need to get this ball back because you're down two scores. If you're the power, you kind of want to methodically just drive the ball down the field and get, get a field goal if you can. Three interceptions, fumble, missed extra point, ten penalties. And going back to that, after this play, I'll, I'll give you a little tidbit about that. Brady going sideline on second and ten. Robinson had a step on Highland, but they couldn't connect. Going going back to that stat that was on the screen, the penalties, the turnovers, it's almost reminiscence of last week's Philadelphia. It, people don't realize when you travel across the country and you come three time zones, your game sometimes a little bit off. And you look at that Philadelphia team, even though San Jose destroyed them, they had flew into Arizona the week before, flew back to Philadelphia, flew back to San Jose. And that does have an effect on you. You don't like to make excuses, but San Jose kind of looks like they're, you know, sleepwalking through tonight's ballgame. Third and ten, and Gray just gets rid of it to center field. Nobody home. 
Good pressure up front by, by Stewart getting into Grady's face. And I think that was a thing where Grady's looking for his receiver to take off because it's almost a scramble drill in the pocket, and he doesn't. He just got to get rid of it so he doesn't take a safety. I mean, that, the pressure's coming, and fortunately, P. Van was there about five yards away, or that would have been an interception. San Jose is still pleading their case to the officials. What are we pleading? Is it that he threw the ball away? Intentional drowning on the play. It's fourth down. Will the clock operator please reset the clock to 6-13, 6-1-3. Okay, they're pleading intentional grounding. I get it. Well, how come at the end of the ball game, if a team is winning and the quarterback just runs around and throws out of bounds, you don't include that as intentional grounding? I, I think Grady thought his receivers was going to take off and threw the ball, and good no call. Fourth and ten. Hurry up. Huge play in the game right here. Grady. Going for it all oh, down the sideline, and they get it. Yes! Oh, what a play on fourth down. Sean Kalena Moku for 36 on fourth and 10. Wow. I mean, that was a great throw and an equally great catch because David Highland is in his back pocket, and I mean, Grady puts that right in the bread basket. I mean, those, that is a battle of number threes. He actually catches the ball and Highland's arm in the same process. I mean, that was that was phenomenal play. And then a penalty at the end of it. After the play was over on sportsmanlike conduct, defense number three, kicking the ball. Half minutes from center goal, it's first down. Highland expresses his displeasure by kicking the ball. And now that penalty ratio went from 10 to 11. Well, the, the play was just phenomenal mm -hmm. on fourth and 10. You know, when they go to that board that's nearest to where we're broadcasting, and they die, they disappear from us. <laughs> so you, you don't know what happened. But the replay showed it clear. It's first and goal power. Grady, end zone, no. Got pressure from Carter. Threw it over the hands of Robinson. I've seen more footballs in three weeks of arena football go high and sail on a lot of these quarterbacks so far and I don't know if I noticed the stripe on the ball is a different color but I don't know if they've changed the the ball the, the maker the manufacturer the tackness of it or whatever but I've seen a lot of balls from a lot of different quarterbacks that are sailing on them this season Brady sway it's a little Swing pass, able to advance it past the five, down near the four. Third and goal coming up. Clock still moving, 417, 416. All that was was an outdoor toss. That was that was something just to keep the clock running because I, I guarantee you Coach James is playing for a field goal right now. He would, he would love a touchdown, but he's playing for a field goal to put his ball club up three scores, and all that was was a way to keep the clock going without the chance of an interception. Third and goal. Grady. Direction for Sway incomplete. Coach James wanted to hold and get it. Fourth down. Well, I guess my logic was wrong because they, they haven't ran the uh, field goal kicker out of here. And this is this is something where your ego, you got to put it to the side. I know he missed an extra point, but. A field goal puts you up three scores. A turnover, a stop on downs, you're only up two now. My risk reward isn't, isn't big enough here for me in this situation. Grady. And they're going. Fourth and goal, Grady, end zone. LeSway had it momentarily, it popped up. Incomplete is the ruling, the Cats hold. LeSway wants a touchdown. And the official came in and gave it a look and ruled incomplete. San Jose ball down by two scores, 3.05 to go.
the risk reward wasn't wasn't great enough here. I mean, the sway's going to come in. He's going to try and run a little dig route, I mean, a little smash route. He's going to catch it. The ball hits the ground, and if coach has a challenge flag, they're going to challenge this one if he has one. But I think he used it. He used it yeah. earlier in the half. Remember on the Willis catch. Yeah. And that, I, that again, I, I, I go back to, yeah, he might have caught it or didn't catch it. Or but it was only flag, 11 but, yards at the time. Yep. Timeout on the field. Oh, it's a good one between San Jose and Pittsburgh. Forty-eight, thirty-four power, and a conversation between Ron James and the officials. Check our fries AFL scoreboard. Orlando leading Tampa Bay, fourteen to nothing. Jacksonville over San Antonio, seven to nothing. In Cleveland, New Orleans tonight. Ron James tossed challenge flag, and they'll take another look. At the fourth down play to the sway. Now I thought the ruling on the challenge was you get one per half, and if you were successful, they gave you an extra one. He's used his, I believe, in the second half in the first series on the catch by or when he thought it wasn't a catch. This one's gonna be tough. I mean, there he's down, but it's not a do you say at that moment he touched the ground he's down or the ground caused the fumble this is going to be a tough one for them to judge because he has the catch complete his feet are down that's a touchdown but now there the ball does come up and i believe once his feet hit the end zone right there he secured it that's a touchdown if the ground can't cause the fumble that's a touchdown but he's coming out pretty quick so it doesn't look like it was a big hard decision. Ever further review, the receiver did not complete the process of the catch. It's incomplete. The ruling on the field is confirmed. And that cost Pittsburgh another timeout. So he doesn't continue on with it and come down and secure it all the way through the catch. Mm -hmm. Credit Okura for getting his arm in there to break it up. And that keeps San Jose with a real legitimate shot in this one. 3.05 to go, trailing by two touchdowns. But they need to get moving offensively. And Virgil Gray is back in the ballgame. Lined up on Harper. Stanley on end zone for Reggie Gray. Gilliam breaks it up. Stanley's reverting back to his first possession down in uh, Portland two weeks ago. He's locking on to the receivers too much. When you see Reggie Gray go across the middle in that backside corner, just sitting there in his zone coverage, you got to automatically come off and go to your front side check down. You have to realize Virgil Gray's hurt. They're not going to play a man to man. They're going to play a zone to keep everything in front of you and not give up a cheap one. Go through your progression. Officials have stopped things. Stanley, 18 of 31, 3 and 3. See, I'm thinking, are, are they talking about the challenge flag? Because I don't think you get two and a half. Here we go. The question was a sit down uh, penalty bonus for Pittsburgh. 
It is not an issue at second down. I'm going to have to drop this class and take a W. What did he just say? <laughs> I have no clue. Second down and I 10. Think incomplete. <laughs> Stanley, Gray's got it all alone. Up the sideline, hit from behind. Reggie is down to the 21-yard line of the power, plus 29. Clock moving, 215, 214. Got to get off his, see here, he's, he's looking at that one receiver, one, one, one receiver, and then he finally realizes, let me get rid of it. He's got to stay unlocked off of his number one receiver. Stanley locking on to Harper, who makes the catch, move the chains, another first down, but the clock's moving. And he actually had Reggie Gray on that one, wide open for a touchdown down in the middle of the field. He saw the contact of Reggie Gray and then went to his check down. One thirty-five, one thirty-four, forty-eight, thirty-four. Power. Cats trailing by fourteen. Stanley pressure. Gonna get out of bounds inside the 10. Which means nothing because that nope. clock is gonna run. All the way down, down to a minute. One. Yep, so getting out of bounds, you just gave yourself up, but it does, it's not gonna stop the clock. And they're not gonna get this off. They're gonna try. Three, two, one. They're not gonna make it. One minute warning, one minute to go in Pittsburgh. Cats trying to come all the way back. San Jose Sabercats football on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Fries.com, by Norton, by Pepsi, and by Logitech. San Jose Sabercats football on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Fries.com, by Norton, by Pepsi, and by Logitech. Great shot of downtown Pittsburgh, Heinz Field, home of the Steelers right there on the left, the yellow seats. Good game, Steve. Yeah. It's going to have a wild next minute, partner. It's going to come down to a wild finish because if San Jose can get in, that all-important onside kick. And that, in, in this league, it's unlike the NFL. The percentages in the NFL to get the onside kick are, I would say, 90 to 10. Where in arena, you're almost a 50-50 chance yeah. of recovering that onside kick. Yeah, much greater frequency success-wise onside kick in the AFL. I'm, I'm wondering, and I didn't see if Thomas, who's actually playing Jack linebacker, got the interception on the first play, moved to wide receiver, I mean, excuse me, the defensive back. I haven't seen him in the game, but I don't know if I've seen him walk off with a limp because now Hope is in the game, right. Nelson's in the game, and I, I, I didn't see if there was a play where he might have limped off or he might be uh, injured as well. The power have surged to life under Ron James, who took over the job after week one. And in San Jose, all they can handle trying to close this one out. Stanley. The Harper incomplete at the one. Harper wanted the flag. No call. I think it was warranted. If you look right here on the replay, I think Freeman got there a little bit early. The thing that I think he does a good job of is he brings his left hand over 
He's hugging him with the right hand, which the referee from the side could not see that. But he, I think he got there a little early. Third and six at the eight. Gray motions. End zone, Gray, touchdown San Jose. Reggie Gray does a great job of beating Virgil Gray and, and on the little smash route or swirl route, whichever one you want to call it. I mean, this is, you got to be so leery of his speed, and he comes in and he, he just sets you up. You don't know where he's going to go. He cuts on a dime. Ooh, Virgil boy. Gray's got his eyes in the backfield. <laughs> What's and he running touchdown. the cone drill on that? That was perfect. <laughs> Drop down, touch the ground. Yeah, pop back up and snare it. Eyes in the backfield to get you beat every time. Between all important PAT and flags, A pair of them. See, and that's what you don't need. Hoke hasn't played all day. He comes in, he do something stupid like that. That's the second time. I saw him earlier on the other onside kick going at Reggie Grace. Got to be smart, got to be professional. Now this will help San Jose if they if they do happen to call this on the power because now if you do happen to recover the onside kick you're going to get free 10 yards which makes the field a little bit smaller. Now, I don't know what they're going to call or if it's going to go their way but if it does you got to be thankful. Reggie Smith is trying. You can't boo him. Personal foul on Pittsburgh. Is what I transcribed yeah. through the code talkers who are trying to break the code somewhere back so we can be victorious as a country. All right. There it is. Right. <laughs> so Gray 781 and a touchdown. And 48 seconds to go. Cats need the ball back and another score, so I don't know. There's the touchdown to Gray, and the personal foul came after the PAT. So somebody obviously pushed or punched or said something. All right, Pep. This is it. I mean, this is this is what it's going to boil down to. And and again, Pittsburgh, San Jose still has three timeouts. So if, if Pittsburgh does happen to recover this, San Jose is still going to have life. Sabercats back on Comcast Sportsnet Plus on the 18th of April, 7 p.m. at the Moda Center to take on Portland. Comcast Sportsnet, home of San Jose Sabercat football. A lot of different ways to do this. You can do the high bounds. We've seen the Pertwee kind of just, I almost call it like the golf putt because mm -hmm. it goes so slow straight ahead. I think if you're San Jose, you want to do the golf putt. Okay. If you bounce it up and you allow it to go past the 10 yard line, the Powers still have a chance to get a first down, ultimately making San Jose burn their timeout and get a first down to run the clock out. If you do the golf one and per three happens uh, and the uh, power recovered inside the 10, that's only four plays they can run, period. Uh, you still have three timeouts, so then on that fourth down, you're going to force Coach James to kick a field goal or go for it on fourth down. So. I, I look for the golf one simply because it gives you the best chance to win if the power recover. Pittsburgh lost two challenges, so they just have one timeout remaining. San Jose has all three timeouts remaining. Bertuis doing a good job of warming up like he's kicking it deep, but I think even the blind man in the arena knows an onside kick is coming. Well, with three timeouts, you could. We'll see what the Cats do strategically. Taggart comes on. The sways back deep between. And Pittsburgh burns their final timeout. Ron James thinks he's in the NFL here. <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, only because, I mean, it's almost like you, can, you, you don't zone blitz. You, you only, some defense you can run. It's an onside kick that he can only kick one way. I mean, 
it's not like he's going to run up and somebody else is going to come in and kick. Pertwee is going to kick it. He's going to kick it to the right or he's going to kick it to the left. Well, now, look, it's March. March Madness. <laughs> Maybe he thinks he's a college coach. He wants to draw something on the grease board. Well, you know, you call time. I think you set up your team. And then I call timeout and I set up my play. And now we got to play. You've wasted your, I, I don't know, you've wasted your last one. If you happen to San Jose gets this ball back and scores, and now you need a timeout to kick a field goal, you've wasted it. And I just figured you had a whole timeout during that period where you and I were up here discussing things to explain to your team what you're expected of them. And, and now to call that timeout, I, I do understand it because you don't want to give up something easy, but it's an onside kick. It's not reinventing the wheel. We know what's coming. Or do we? Between. <laughs> he's going to come back the other way, and the Cats have it, and it's executed absolutely perfect. He approached it like he was going to kick it to the wide side, came back to the short side, and hits the little dribbler. Perfect bounce, and Scheichel is right there and didn't have to fight anybody to grab it. Look at this. Tell me Pertwee hasn't played some soccer in his life. And see, that is exactly what I was talking about. You you gave your defense too many times to think. You know, Tommy Taggart right there sees the ball. He's known in his onside recovering skills. He's supposed to go blow up the, the San Jose Seven Cats, which he does, therefore letting the ball squeeze right by him. Still work to do, but plenty of time with 45 seconds and three timeouts. Stanley, can he come of age here? Gray. Makes the catch, lofted that one right over the hands of the linebacker, Nelson. Beautiful pass by Nathan Stanley. Yeah, that was a good job. He actually does like a little Tim Tebow jump pass there to get it over the top and in the bread basket. I mean, better second half, definitely. Only, only took five seconds. Much better, 12-19, three scores. Gray over the middle, down to the power 15, plus 12. And see, this is what I'm talking about where the timeout's coming to that. Because you would say, well, you're winning. Why would you call a timeout? Because I want to give my offense the ball back with a chance to win. But you have none now. San Jose calls a timeout with 24 seconds to go. Their first timeout. See, and this is where it's going to get interesting. Coach Arbets, you know, he's, he's going to have a decision. The rules usually state on the road you go for two. At home, you play overtime. He's going to make, have to make a decision if they get in the end zone. You know, when I look at the power not having Rodriguez, Virgil Gray being banged up, I take my chances and kick the PAT and go to overtime against this team. Well, now, Steve, we've seen it once tonight. Those PATs are not guaranteed. <laughs> True that. Through that. First down, San Jose at the power 15. 24 seconds to go in regulation. Pittsburgh with a seven point lead. Well, I look at it this way if we go to overtime, that's good for me. I can charge my phone up a little bit more so I can listen to music on the way home. <laughs> Stanley. Gray. Curls his way back near the six. Spock moving. And now the Cats call another timeout with 15 seconds to go. You know, this is just three-step drop. Reggie Gray is going to find the hole in front of Virgil Gray, who's still a little limpy, and catch the ball and try and stretch out for the first down, which would have stopped the clock. Unfortunately, he's about a yard short. I mean, if you're the power, you got out to a big lead. You, you jumped on San Jose. You got turnovers. And you're in a position now where you might, at least if nothing else, go to overtime and possibly lose the ball game. You know, your psyche and your mental capacity has to start taking toll because you jumped out to a 21-point lead at halftime versus Cleveland, and you lost that ball game. So if, if you give up this one to San Jose, you really got to start looking at yourself and thinking, what can you do to finish ball games? One yard for a first down, six for a score. And they're a touchdown and a PAT away from tying it. With 15 seconds to go. Gray in the slot. So they come back. Harper makes the catch and is hugged up against the boards. 
10 seconds to go. Well, this is what it's made of. This is where you're going to see a, a rookie quarterback who struggled early, you know, have a chance to lead his team down here and possibly sit in this game to overtime. And this is, this is where you get your money. This is where you earn your keep right here. Nathan Stanley in his second start, filling in for Russ Mikna. Out with the head injury. First and goal. Delay a game. That's, that almost works in San Jose's favor. It gives Coach Smith and this offense more room to operate, especially with a big body like Huey Whitaker down there, giving him some more room. Not, not, not that big of a deal. First and goal, now back at the eight. Whitaker goes left, Harper right, Gray will motion. Stanley. Time lets it go. End zone. Gray up over the wall. Got it. Touchdown, Sabercats. Now, San Jose has to understand game's not over. You still got to make the PAT or go for two. What a play by Gray. And, and I. I almost thought here he held the ball too long because he had Gray early, and I mean, he takes his shot right in the chest, stands in there, and I mean, right here, I thought he should have thrown the ball there, but I didn't know what route Reggie Gray was running, and I mean, that's just, I mean, that's a phenomenal catch to, to hold it up on the wall. PAT team is out for San Jose. And in arena football, people are wondering, like, well, he didn't get his feet down. In arena football, you don't. If you have possession of it in the air, into that wall, is it, is it, it's an extension of the turf, so that's why it was a touchdown. And San Jose and Coach Arbet doing the wise thing here, calling timeout. They had one in the bag. May as well use it, just three seconds to go, and now they can have a discussion. We're going to go for PAT for one. We're going to try to win it right here. And I'm, up, I'm glad I'm up here with you because this is a discussion that you have to look at a whole bunch of factors. How are we playing on defense? Do we have a play that we think can win? Do you know you're here with a rookie quarterback? Is he is he able to do it? I mean, this is this is this is, this is one where if you were going to go for two, in my opinion, I would do it from the PAT stance. I would act like we're just going to kick it and send it to overtime. They're going to be coming, you know. As, as fast as they can to block it so it doesn't go over time and that's where I would pull out a little trick play out of that formation here because now you got guys on the field who aren't used to defending uh, defensive play they're used to playing special teams. How about this for a note from our ace statistician San Jose has scored three touchdowns in the final four seconds of each half they got two touchdowns the end of the first half, mm -hmm. under four seconds to go, and they get one here, the end of regulation with three ticks on the clock. Wow. Look at this. Offense coming back out. Cat's going to try to win it. Well, this is how our Harper goes out. Willis comes on. Play clock now moving at 21, 20, three seconds on the clock. Everybody inside console on their feet. Pittsburgh. Holden, a one-point lead. Stanley trying to bring him all the way back. Gray will motion. Here we go. Surveys, looks. Willis got it and then dropped it, and it's incomplete. Willis had that ball. I mean, that was a perfectly thrown ball high and away. Willis has it come down. It looks like it hits the wall and jars loose, and he drops it. I mean, this is great. Good job, good protection, gets it up over. He has it there, comes down, and it looks like the wall caused him to drop the ball. Absolutely right, Pap. It's perfect. Great swipe defensively and right on top of the wall. And victory slips out of the hands of San Jose and Jordan Mudge, the center. Still down for the Sabercats. I mean, that ball was thrown beautifully over two defenders. And 
you, you, you're just hoping the ball would have bounced back inside. And now you're hoping Mudge is okay. And he just got his bell rung a little bit, something there, or wind knocked out of him, or you hope it's not something that's serious. And it looks like he got up limping. Yeah, this doesn't look good. Being helped off by his teammates. Logitech, offensive player of the game. It's not going to make him feel any better, but Nathan Stanley tossed four second half touchdown passes and was a wall away yeah. from pulling out the victory. The yeah. pass was there, the catch was on, and as Willis. His arms came down and the wall just jarred the ball loose and that was it. The funny thing is, had this game been in San Jose, it would have been a touchdown because there is no wall back there. And that's where, you know, some of these arenas, the Portland arenas curled. And that's why if you look at some of these arenas, you gotta you gotta plan ahead. Logitech defensive player of the game. Well San Jose crawled back into this one at the end of the first half. A couple of scores and David Highland is gonna be our Logitech defensive play of the game from down here on special teams and snaring it and right at the end of the half getting six more on the board for the cats and that tightened everything up. And now the best they can hope for is a repeat of Highland's performance and the sway falls down and then gets up and recovers it as it hit the back wall. So Pittsburgh now just a they're going to have to do something for a play because you can't just take a knee in the AFL. Well, see, this is where it gets interesting. Now, holding in the end zone is a safety. If you're, if you're intentional grounded in the end zone, it's a safety. And this is what I think Grady's just going to drop back, throw the ball as far as he can yep. into the stands, which technically is intentional grounded. But they don't call it. So I think it's a way of getting the clock to run out in the game. Always. It's, it's the equivalent to taking a knee. Right. So what they need to do now. Pittsburgh to win the game is execute the snap and see this ball should actually be on the two and a half. And he does just that. And the horn sounds and Pittsburgh. Comes away victorious. We welcome you to tonight's Pepsi post game wrap up. Tommy Grady and Pittsburgh get to one and one with the victory over the Sabercats. Nathan Stanley and grew up a lot tonight. Had some mistakes, but also made some plays as well, Steve. He yeah. Got off to a rocky start, but you know what? San Jose battled back. Yeah, I mean, he battled back and he made some, some bad throws and some costly turnovers, but he stayed the course and he fought back and almost had a chance to win it at the end. About that one to Gray with a huge catch up on top of the wall. And the Cats thought about going for the tie in overtime, instead tried to go for two, and were so close to getting it. Beautiful pass to Willis. His hands on it, couldn't pull it in. And Stanley's numbers, 265 yards. He'd like to clean up the interceptions, but that's going to happen on the road against a quality, energized Pittsburgh team. Yeah, I, th I think when you look at the power, you look at the record last year and the score last year, but this team is totally different. They put together a roster with some guys that can play, and then when you have as many turnovers as San Jose had, you're going to have a tough time winning the ball game. But boy, were they close. Yeah, yeah. Oh, were they close, Pat. You know, and that's you just you learn from it, you move on, you you figure out your situation now, Russ Mickna back, and you, you go. National Conference standings brought to you by Fries. Cats fall to two and one. Shock sitting there at one and one. And Portland struggled a bit to start at 0 oh and two. Orlando and Tampa still. At 2 and 0, oh, and Pittsburgh there with the victory tonight improves to 1 and 1. Well, entertaining and a good trip to Pittsburgh. Yeah, to say the least. Only thing missing for San Jose, the W came within a point. It's again our final score. Pittsburgh Power get their first victory of the season, 48-47.
over San Jose. Thanks for watching Sabercats football on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. From a partner, Steve Pappen, and our entire crew, I'm Rich Cellini, saying so long from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where the power win it. 48-47.